Well, it's a real pleasure to uh, announce the final speaker for this amazing conference, Arthur Avila. Arthur Avila is uh, just turned 40, uh, I think a few months ago. Um, actually, he did his PhD when he was 21, and actually I heard about him even when he was 18. So he had a really early start. He uh, did, uh, like many of the film analysts, the, uh, got the gold medal and uh, lots of prizes, the Lamb Prize. The, the, you know, he's a member of the, the TWAS. And uh, of course, uh, the most important contribution uh, you know, was sort of, uh, the initial uh, contribution was the uh, Tan Martini problem and uh, on, on Schroeder operators. And then also uh, working on Teichmüller uh, flows uh, but his PhD was really on one-dimensional dynamics. And, uh, yeah, for all this work, he was awarded five years ago a field medal. And uh, today he will speak about TBA, but I was just uh, told that actually he has decided what he's going to talk about. Uh, it's not always so clear, because sometimes a few minutes before he changes subject, because the audience looks different than what he expected. But he has decided, at least uh, I think you have decided, to talk about uh, generic conservative dynamics. Yes. Thanks, uh, Sebastian. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to uh, give this uh, talk here, that I, I was in Krakow. Uh, only once before in uh, 2017, and then uh, already they were thinking of organizing, so I, uh, I am committed for two years already to, to be here. Uh, it is uh, uh, well a pleasure to, go to, to have the opportunity to conclude the conference as well, that uh, has been running so well. Uh, the, I, I eventually chose uh, a topic a little bit more established uh, with uh, several uh, results that have been already um, uh, published and so on, because uh, uh, taking into account that it's a plenary uh, talk for uh, non-specialists uh, of uh, this particular subject I'm going to, to cover. So, um, so let's start with the uh, historical uh, motivation of what you are dealing with. So, but the, the base object would be uh, conservative dynamics, uh, which the setup uh, would be uh, uh, just uh, starting with a map on a manifold. I will assume that uh, uh, it's a really manifold uh, smooth, and uh, and uh, uh, so you have this uh, diffeomorphism uh, is a possibility. But I will start considering also um, the case of homeomorphism as motivation diffeomorphism. And uh, it's conservative, so uh, the, the condition uh, uh, we start that there is a volume measure. So there is a volume. Uh, 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 given by some smooth form. And uh, we consider the class of maps that uh, preserve this volume form. So, uh, uh, so there's a volume, so, so there's preservation. F preserves volume. And then you have a uh, uh, space of maps with this property, so that uh, which I write uh, CK uh, vol, or maybe diff K vol, maybe, uh, of M, where uh, to get the regularity. So um, I'd be mostly uh, interested in the case of lowest regularity here, so that uh, uh, when I discuss the generic case, it will be mostly with respect to uh, the C1 topology. It's okay equals one. Uh, uh, initially, I, I might consider, uh, even if bad notation, K equals zero to refer to the case of uh, homeomorphisms, and um, uh, maybe higher K also as motivation. Um, so that is this space, and this is uh, one setup. Another. Uh, a little bit more specific, because uh, uh, when you consider uh, 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 from, from cl classical mechanical systems and so on, there is a, an extra restriction about the maps that you get. They are symplectic, so there is a, uh, you may also consider the situation where uh, you have a symplectic form. If, the, if M is a symplectic manifold, and then uh, we are going to consider the the class D of K omega of M. And then you may be also interested in this, on this case. So these are different setups that you may 
consider. And um, basic, uh, one of the most basic questions that you may ask about uh, a diffeomorphism once you have an invariant measure is, uh, so given f, so given f, is it ergodic? So, which means that, um, of course, that you cannot break down measurably into smaller parts uh, visible with respect to the big measure. Um, and, uh, and so this is a question about specific f, but uh, you can put in the, the, from the general point of view whether what is the, uh, uh, how frequent, no, you don't fix f, is ergodicity. So those are kind of very natural, uh, very natural questions. Uh, the initial uh, uh, investigations regarding this were uh, done, carried in the uh, C0 case. So we were considering the case of uh, uh, homeomorphism, and it is uh, there was work of Oxtobi and Ulan. which was uh, considered homeomorphisms. Generic. Genericity in C0, in D, well, in uh, div, which is on div zero, well, let's say. Okay, so Oxtobi, Yulan considered this, and then they, uh, they were able to prove that the generic Homeomorphism is ergodic by kind of uh, so this was around the 30s. Uh, uh, the the basic uh, strategy was that uh, so you can make some kind of uh, so, so, so basically uh, ergodicity is a property that uh, once you establish it densely, it will be automatically generic. So it's a G delta. Uh, define G delta set. Um, so basically, you need to um, to prove that uh, 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 you can, given uh, homeomorphisms, that you can find a nearby homeomorphisms that uh, appears to be uh, ergodic in the sense that uh, uh, the orbits of the system, uh, most of them, a large measure set of orbits, will distribute it distribute with respect to Lebesgue measure, but you don't need to prove this at once. You can show that uh, uh, most orbits, they are going to be uh, fairly well distributed with respect to Lebesgue measure. And the way they do this is they have uh, uh, a manifold here, and then uh, they, div they split it into little cubes. So everything becomes little cubes. And then they, 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 they do a trick to make uh, uh, the cubes, so there's a little bit space between the cubes to, uh, to, to allow to glue, but except for this kind of gluing part, basically they, they approximate the map by some kind of uh, cube-like approximation of the map where a cube just go to another of the cubes. And, um, and once, and in a way that actually, uh, it goes through all, so, so there, there are several perturbations, but then they can perturb, like initially you have an approximation of the map, so it was not, uh, give, it was giving a specific permutation of cubes, then you can perturb this uh, permutation using several tricks, uh, some combinatorial tricks to get uh, a, a permutation that is, um, that is transitive, so that uh, you visit all cubes, and once it comes back, so eventually, uh, so it's going to be, a peri it's periodic in the end, after going through everybody, and uh, you come back as the identity on the cube. So the certain large, so, so basically, then it restart, you can uh, uh, actually get, so that uh, this kind of uh, a periodic approximation, uh, they can show that you can always approximate, and since you are visiting all of the cubes that are sp spaced out in the manifold, it's fairly, seen to, you, you see that all the orbits that are captured by those cubes are getting uh, well 
distributed with respect to Lebesgue measure. Okay, so they they proved this, and uh, so this serves to us uh, as a possible inspiration. So is it kind of realistic uh, 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 picture of what you can find now in the case of diffeomorphisms? And uh, it turns out not to be the case because uh, uh, the kind of systems that you produce in this way, they are kind of fairly uh, organized, so because uh, you, you have this kind of uh, high periodicity system. In particular, in particular they have uh, 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 zero entropy, right? Because uh, there, there's no complexity uh, uh, being created by the iteration. So this is kind of uh, oxtobi ulan construction. Is zero. Uh, metric entropy, right? And uh, for diffeomorphisms, on the other hand, uh, there are mechanisms that produce uh, stably uh, positive entropy. So for diffeomorphisms, so that's well known. So uh, existence of a nose of diffeomorphisms. shows that persistence of a uh, of positive entropy is pos possible for k at least one um so, so that uh, basically what it means is that if you take the map on the, to the, the cat map starting with this on the torus, so the simplest uh, Anosov map, uh, this is a, a persistence under perturbation, uh, and uh, the, all those maps that you get uh, are going to be uh, uh, have positive uh, metric entropy. And this con construction, uh, it cannot be, it, the beginning of this approximation is really impossible. You cannot kind of break into, uh, into cubes and hope for some periodicity or, or anything like this. Uh, so that's not going to be one uh, approach. On the other hand, if you go now to, to high K, and uh, uh, actually you see that uh, 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 there's uh, also good reason that uh, things will not work, but not because of a nozzle condition, but uh, because of some, something contrary to a nozzle, but it, that j just breaks down completely the hopes of, uh, of having ergodicity. So for instance, on the torus, still, uh, uh, so for high K, so you, you know, I could find some specific K, but maybe not very large, like three or four. So for high K, uh, uh, you have uh, obstructions, stable obstructions to ergodicity uh, from KAM theory. So in the case of, uh, let's say, in two-dimensional cases, a little bit more dramatic, there's even uh, obstruction to transitivity. So basically you have a, an elliptic point and then uh, with some conditions and then uh, uh, there'll be invariant curves around and orbits will stay around here and the orbits that are outside don't come inside. So then clearly the system's not ergodic. And then this, in this case it's caused not by some kind of highly hyperbolic and uh, positive entropy behavior, but some kind of low, um, um, some kind of uh, opposite, um, very regular behavior, quasi-periodic behavior. Anyway, uh, so that's uh, uh, what uh, was realized from the uh, work of uh, Komogorov and so on. Uh, the, the, the thing is now, uh, this you need certain sufficiently high case. So what we decide to investigate and this, uh, uh, well, many people started to investigate it. What I'm going to talk here is mostly work on, uh, based on the work of uh, some uh, other people and uh, of me and other co-authors as well, but mostly work with uh, um, Amy Wilkinson and Sylvain Crovisier. And Amy. Wilkinson. So to, to consider what happens for k equals one. 
exactly. So that uh, uh, would be uh, 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 would it look through different mechanisms? You would get this picture of generic ergodicity. Uh, or uh, uh, actually, there are some uh, blockings for for this picture. And uh, we still don't understand the general case. It's uh, we we have no understand precisely, uh, it turns out that we don't understand exactly the case where, where, where there is zero entropy. Uh, we concentrated investigation of, uh, uh, consider, let's say, k equals one, and the case of positive entropy. Right? And, um, our theorem that uh, also we are going to have uh, a few theorems. So one theorem says that uh, the generic F belonging to diff one vol is so you consider a generic F if the entropy with respect to the symmetric entropy is positive, then F is ergodic. All right, so this is one theorem. Uh, there is another theorem that the same is true. So this is a different paper that's kind of more recent. Uh, the same in symplectic case. It's same, but uh, I will mention for uh, ultimately a different uh, mechanism that, uh, that is involved. So actually, uh, what we know, like uh, the, 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 the description, like ergodicity is the first question. So once you uh, know that some things are ergodic, uh, you can ask more about the structure of the, those maps. And actually, the kind of maps that are, are, are output by this theorem, they have dynamics that is to, uh, quite different from the ones that are of this theorem. And uh, the mechanism that's producing ergodicity in this case is uh, different from the mechanism that's producing ergodicity in this case. So in both, uh, you have some similarities coming from the, the presence of some hyperbolicity. So um, this, uh, uh, so we are concentrating on the case of um, of uh, the question of ergodicity, but to answer, it connects to uh, other questions that uh, were asked, uh, and, and to a program that was uh, started by. Um, uh, so connects to the many program to uh, study Lyapunov exponents of the of generic diffeomorphisms. C1 uh, maps, which was started uh, when uh, probably uh, maybe in Poland. Uh, that uh, I think maybe the paper. Uh, would I be wrong if I, if the paper was was in proceedings of the Congress in uh, um, of the International Congress in '83? Uh, maybe it was that. I might be confusing. Um, anyway, he produced at that moment. Um, uh, a, a, an important paper that was basically proposing that uh, 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 so the, 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 the war had been recent uh, uh, advanced on the theory of Lyapunov exponents and Pessin theory uh, was becoming understood and um, and he proposed to understand uh, what's the picture uh, of how the Lyapunov exponents are in the C1 topology uh, with respect to, to, to perturbations in C1 topology. So he proposed this, and there have been uh, there were technical difficulties, so he didn't uh, uh, 
go, uh, so he, he proposed some pr proposal of proof to in some case, but didn't kind of complete. Many years later, um, uh, Jairo Boki and the uh, co-authors uh, uh, advanced the program towards, uh, uh, to a large extent, and then uh, this, our work also, uh, in a sense, completes uh, a little bit uh, the description that you can get for the generic C1 maps. So, but basically, uh, the, uh, the, con the conditions of uh, uh, the work of Magné, so, so Magné wants to connect Lyapunov exponents So let's say persistent Lyapunov exponents with some kind of stable uh, hyperbolic uh, objects. And not kind of hyperbolic in the sense of uh, on projective hyperbolicity. He understood projectively. So the advantage of uh, Lyapunov exponents is that they are always defined. Uh, the disadvantage of Lyapunov exponents is that uh, uh, you can like uh, they, they are they are defined even in situations that uh, uh, don't get that much regularity. So that they are intrinsically measurable objects, and then uh, a little bit to put difficult to put your hands on from a stable perspective. But he said that if uh, he, he had the idea that uh, if uh, the Lyapunov exponents have some kind of persistence in the, the way they behave, so you could uh, uh, actually uh, associate some kind of uh, uh, more, uh, um, more topological nature and a uh, stably topological uh, uh, object. So it connects to, uh, eventually, the, 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 it connects to the notion of uh, uh, dominated uh, splitting. So these objects are to be... Right, so in the Lyapunov exponents, you are going to have uh, Uzele that's uh, decomposition. So there will be a uh, um, subspace of the tangent space along which you are going to see the different Lyapunov exponents. They are going to be uh, uh, but just defined over uh, sets of positive measure. On the other hand, a dominated splitting associates uh, it, it, it's a variation of the notion of hyperbolic splitting, but basically uh, you, uh, you split Tm or you split the Tm over some subset of the manifold. But anyway, you split Tm is going to be uh, E plus. So this, you can have more, but let's start with this. Uh, e plus F, so there are two uh, uh, sub-bundles, and then this will be a continuous and invariant decomposition. And uh, which behaves uh, uh, projectively hyperbolic. So what it means is that uh, if you have vectors now that are in the tangent space, then they approach exponentially under iteration. They uh, so th this would be the strong bundle and then this weak bundle. Let's say so. Uh, let's write uh, e plus and e minus. Let us say uh, uh, so this uh, so this so, so uh, uh, any vector that you take it you converge under iteration exponen exponentially to the strong bundle uh, when you iterate it forward and exponentially when you uh, iterate it backwards to the uh, weak bundle. So this is what you're going to get if you had a hyperbolic splitting. The difference is that we weaken the notion because uh, uh, the, you don't ask whether the, the vector itself is expanding or, con or contracting. So here you could have vectors that are contracting it just means that another vector will prefer to go to the E plus. Uh, so, yeah, so, so I, I needed to say any vector that's not e, in, in minus under iteration will approach uh, E plus. So that's a E minus works as a repeller and E plus as, a, as an attractor. So basically, vectors that uh, are not trapped in the, in, in the direction of E minus, they prefer to go to E plus because basically the directions in E plus are growing faster 
than the directions in E minus, so the components uh, that they have in the E plus direction will start to becoming the main, uh, the, the main part of, uh, of the vectors uh, under iteration. So it is um, uh, this, uh, this notion, and this notion is, uh, uh, if you look at projective, it leads to some hyperbolic picture, thus uh, stable with respect to C1 perturbations. And uh, the picture that comes from this is uh, uh, the outcome of this comes, uh, gets to theorems like uh, in two dimensions. Uh, I, I should note that uh, in two dimensions, since you have um, uh, the, 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 uh, you can have just one dimensional bundles, and because of conservativity, what you see in one direction has to be the opposite. So you have expansion in one direction must have contraction in the other direction. There's not much space. So uh, in two dimensions, uh, 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 dominated splitting uh, in a conservative setting is automatically hyperbolic, but it's not the case in general. Uh, then there is the Bocchi theorem saying that uh, in two dimensions, in 2D, uh, generic, if you have distinct Lyapunov exponents, it comes from a, a dominated composition, does an hyperbolic splitting. So generic, uh, diffuse, uh, generically, either all zero exponents, or dominated a global dominated splitting. So he could, could get that. And this, in this case, it implies a nose of. And from Bocchi theorem, this answers, uh, uh, this gives this theorem here, and this as well, because simplicity is the, is the same uh, in, in two dimensions. Uh, uh, this implies in this case here, so zero exponents, it corresponds to zero entropy, and global dominated splitting, in this case, uh, it implies uh, ergodic, generically. So it's a, it gives you a version uh, in, in this specific setting, but uh, things change in, uh, in a higher dimension, and there is not, not this equivalence between dominated splittings, and there are other problems. With respect to the Lyapunov exponents, then uh, there is works by uh, Bocchi Viana and then uh, by Bocchi himself in the case of symplectic. But let me just mention the Bocchi Viana theorem. So, which says that uh, Lyapunov, uh, um, Lyapunov spectrum, non trivial. Lyapunov spectrum leads to uh, dominated compositions, dominated splittings, so it means that uh, uh, basically if you find for a generic diffeomorphism, if you, if you have uh, orbits with uh, uh, non-trivial Lyapunov spectrum, then actually the, the, the Uzele that's splitting over this periodic orbit, that's kind of, it consists of several, uh, at, l at least two bundles, but maybe several more, it's going to be a dominated splitting. So each, each member associated to a Lyapunov exponent that's bigger than another, actually it, it behaves uh, in this uh, projective sense in a hyperbolic way. So that uh, you don't see maybe uh, uniformly the Lyapunov exponent, but you see uniformly that one Lyapunov exponent is bigger than the other. So that uh, they, they are well separated. So uh, the, the speed itself you cannot control uh, uniformly. So there is a, um, a, 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 an issue that d d doesn't quite conclude the picture because it's related to the lack of ergodicity, but it's somewhat more serious, is that these dominated splittings are not necessarily global. because this is kind of a pointwise, more pointwise result. It, it passed to the closure, but the closure might, not, might be different. So you might have an orbit that uh, is in a compact invariant set, but it's not the whole manifold. And then you are going to get uh, uh, an invariant splitting that will be defined uh, uh, continuously over the whole compact set, but, uh, uh, this but doesn't extend 
uh, beyond. And uh, it doesn't know how to break up the situation and to, to get something more general. It's, it's inter interesting to have this uh, kind of uh, one advantage of having global dominated splitting, which I, I didn't mention, is that sometimes uh, you may not for topological reasons, you might not be, it might not be possible to have a dom dominated splitting over the whole manifold. Because if you have uh, a, a look that uh, uh, having a dominated splitting means that I can split the tangent space into two continuous fiber bundles of, uh, 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 of some kind of intermediate dimensions, and th this leads to some topological obstructions on the nature of the manifold. So sometimes uh, this is just impossible to happen at all, and in these situations you can conclude that in certain, uh, uh, you would be able to conclude that in certain uh, uh, manifolds you would not be able to have dominated splittings, and hence uh, you'd have to have only zero Lyapunov exponents. This is a conclusion uh, that you get from this theorem. Uh, that you, you never have, uh, so the conclusion would be that actually the positive entropy situation cannot be generic uh, over open sets, but uh, 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 this you cannot conclude at all uh, from this kind of result because uh, uh, you could have local dominated splittings defined in some open sets and then that doesn't generate any topological information about the, the system. Anyway, then uh, Jairo Boki uh, did some uh, a version of this for symplectic systems as well. The conclusions are slightly different due, due, due to symmetries of uh, Lyapunov exponents, sometimes stronger, and, uh, uh, but uh, there, there are some, uh, some difficulties. Uh, anyway, what is the relation here is that uh, uh, we actually use some ideas this, so we in part to improve the conclusion of this in order to, 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 to get there. And uh, so we actually prove a version of this here, so that uh, so the theorem would be that uh, uh, so if you have either generically in C in D one vol. either. You have trivial Lyapunov spectrum. Or something that we call, uh, or it's non. So this, this would be the case of zero entropy, and the case of positive entropy would be non uniformly anosov. Uh, you can refine the, the dominated splitting, but here I just need two. So there is a decomposition on E plus plus E minus global splitting. Global, uh, it is a dominated splitting, but uh, the Lyapunov expo so the Lyapunov exponents over E plus are positive over almost every orbit and over E minus are negative. And centrally, uh, so they, 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 they are separated by uh, the splitting, it's a global splitting, and the, there are no zero Lyapunov exponents. Once you got all this information and you got rid of the zero Lyapunov exponents, there, 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 there is techniques that uh, emulate the, the uh, usual uh, hyperbolic techniques the, of uh, like that prove ergodicity of a nose of maps and so on. So you can try to prove ergodicity, uh, generically at least, of non-uniformly a nose of maps uh, using techniques like the Hopf, um, Hopf lemma and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and this kind of old ideas. Uh, it does work. Uh, we, we use some version of this proved in a paper with, uh, uh, that I did with Jairo. Um, um, and I need to start raising. So, so that's the way we get. And then there is a difference that you get in the case of symplectic. So let me erase it. Just, so in the symplectic case, so that we, I call the theorem, yes, so that... Uh, So, uh, generically, in 
uh, C uh, in diff one omega, so the symplectic case, then uh, there exists uh, either all Lyapunov exponents are zero, or there exists, uh, it's better than a dominated split thing, there exists a partially hyperbolic splitting. It is global. So it's E plus, plus E zero, plus E minus. This might be empty, might be empty. Uh, in this case, it's like it, it should be a nozzle. There's just the extremal bundles. Um, and uh, uh, so the, due to the um, um, due to the symmetry, so the, in the case of symplectic systems, uh, there, there are uh, Lyapunov exponents that are, are positive. They are related to one that's a, a negative, and it has a, just a, the same absolute value, so that they can come in pairs. And um, uh, what may happen is that uh, you, you may have some kind of central splitting where it cannot be decomposed anymore, so it cannot be refined, the, this to produce a dominated splitting, and then the only way that it can survive with this kind of ideas of, uh, of, uh, of money that, uh, uh, that uh, 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 the composition of the OZL splitting should be uh, coming from a, a, a dominated splitting is that uh, uh, the, the Lyapunov exponents collapse to a single one in the center bundle, and they, since they, they come in pairs, uh, uh, this needs to be zero Lyapunov exponents. And then uh, you have a central bundle, and then also by the symmetries of expansion and contraction, the once you have the, this kind of domination, this means that uh, uh, in this direction everything actually is expanded, and here things are actually contracted, so it's not just uh, projective hyperbolicity, but uh, here you really have hyperbolic bundles in the extremes. So you get more information, here. On the other hand, uh, on E0, so, so, so this is uh, expanding. This is contracting. And this, if non-empty, has actually zero exponents. So uh, an even number of zero exponents must be trapped in this, uh, in this thing. And this annoys us because uh, uh, we get uh, all this information, that's the most you can get, because this situation, once it uh, develops and with obstructions for uh, a further splitting of the central direction, it is stable, so that there's no more perturbation that can be done. And uh, uh, we cannot conclude then by, by applying uh, uh, the direct Hopf argument using this kind of uh, a transverse unstable and stable bundles, but then to, to rescue comes uh, this situation. Was studied in a paper with uh, Jairo and uh, Amy, well, let's call it just ABW. Uh, this was studied and proved by, by another technique and Generically ergodic by uh, this is uh, this f fits into a different framework that's uh, is still what uh, 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 is called a Hopf argument, but it's a Hopf argument without uh, tra transverse unstable and stable bundles. There is not enough dimensions to, to run the traditional Hopf argument, so there is a more advanced Hopf argument that comes from uh, so the kind of arguments here it comes from what so Pushub. Arguments, of course, like uh, they, they, they originated from uh, from uh, uh, Pushu, but then uh, it's in, in, in practice you have Burns uh, is the more refined theorem of Burns Wilkinson, and uh, and then some uh, some refinement that's done in this paper with uh, with Gyro based on uh, where the refinement comes from, assuming uh, uh, information about the Lyapunov exponents and uh, and using this to 
to conclude. Anyway, um, so get a, a, a exactly this uh, solution. Let me check uh, host time. Well, it's uh, we are running well. Um, so uh, what is uh, going on on the on, on this uh, on these theorems? Um, basically. Uh, the, 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 the idea for this, uh, so, so I said that this kind of immediately implies this one. The idea here is that uh, is some kind of uh, uh, idea of perturbing uh, Lyapunov exponents, which was uh, introduced in uh, works of uh, uh, Shubu Wilkinson and also uh, uh, Baraviera Bonatti and um, and there are other techniques that are, that are refined. So they, they combine it with other ideas that were of uh, 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 Boki and, uh, and Boki Viana, and there are several ideas of perturbing Lyapunov exponents. So one bunch of ideas uh, goes through, so that uh, related to, to many uh, propositions that uh, if there are no dominated splittings, then uh, the, the, some things happen, but uh, one possibility is that angles between the, the Ozeledet's bundles, they, uh, uh, they can become small, and uh, by becoming small, you can kind of flip direction, so you can send on the perturbation, it could be that uh, something that was in uh, one bundle ends up, and by, 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 by moving slightly, it hits the other bundle, so it mix the Lyapunov behavior of one bundle with the other. So this, if you do it controlled, show that, uh, this, it, it, that it, it, it changes abruptly uh, uh, by confusing two distinct Lyapunov exponents over positive measure sets. So it's a little bit uh, delicate, but basically, the stability of the Lyapunov exponents, which can be uh, established to hold generically uh, by some kind of uh, abstract nonsense, uh, the, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this stability uh, will imply that you are not able actually to do this procedure, and the only way that's not possible to do this procedure is actually because the, the angles are separated. And then you do uh, some other uh, uh, tricks to, to go to, 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 first, to, to, to great hyperbole, to actual uh, this projective hyperbole. So that, that there is some technique. So this is a way that mix uh, Lyapunov exponents of different bundles. And there is uh, uh, another uh, kind of bunch of ideas that, uh, that uh, uh, affects the average behavior of the Lyapunov exponents. So you look at, at some given subbundle, and then uh, you, what they did is that uh, you can compute the average Lyapunov exponent there just by integrating the Jacobian over the subbundle. And um, you may uh, uh, change it slightly by, uh, uh, by uh, 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 modifying your dynamics by uh, uh, giving or taking uh, Lyapunov exponents just, uh, just a small amount uh, from the, the other uh, bundles and giving it to this to, to this bundle. So if you can do that, uh, 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 so that there are techniques to do that, you can change the average behavior. So this is, uh, would be a technique to, let's say, once you face a zero Lyapunov exponent, you can make it slightly negative. Uh, uh, or positive or whatever. Um, this doesn't work certainly to, to address this uh, central bundle due to the symmetries of the Lyapunov exponents. The average over the central bundle will always be zero and uh, there's no way to, to, to change that. So that there's no way to play this trick. There, 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 there is some kind of link between the different Lyapunov exponents. But anyway, so here uh, uh, we, we are able to, to, to do this uh, by promoting uh, a, a construction that uh, was based on an average behavior, so we are computing an integral to a, to a construction that works uh, uh, almost surely uh, over there, so or at least 99% of the orbit. So basically, uh, uh, instead of just having that over a set, you are, const you are controlling the average of the Lyapunov exponents, this would not be good enough, but you go from average to, uh, to, to typical behavior, uh, and, and this is by uh, producing some kind of uh, probabilistic uh, uh, version of those arguments that were introduced uh, earlier in the paper, symplectic paper of Boki that allows you to uh, apply some version of a law of large numbers to, 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 to go from average behavior to, uh, to control uh, the, measure of the, uh, uh, this, the, the measure of the set of orbits that sees the average behavior. So there are uh, several kind of technical things, so as a mixture of several uh, technologies, and most importantly, uh, uh, we, uh, be, uh, we are able to realize this even when the, it's just a local construction, so you have uh, uh, a compact set which is 
uh, not necessarily uh, the whole manifold. So there are many difficulties because, well, it's not a manifold, it's just some kind of ugly compact set that might not be uh, uh, deal with this, but more fundamentally, once you perturb, the compact sets move as well. So the invariant compact sets not stable, and you kind of uh, are a little bit worried that you have to run all after this compact set. Then there is some, some trick that, uh, not a trick, but there, there, there is some, uh, some approach to be able to, to do this with, uh, like, uh, essentially, we split into several cases, and uh, when the, we cannot keep track of the compact set, we win as well for other uh, reasons. So that uh, by this way, we can always kind of be, uh, get some uh, advantage over zillow Lyapunov exponents and, make, uh, and, and show that the situations uh, always lead to some kind of... Uh, other more unlikely situations, and then uh, uh, eventually after, and fortunately this converges after an induction with uh, finitely many steps, so uh, broad steps. So this is uh, an approach that's tried here, and uh, uh, by uh, after doing this, we can kind of show that uh, either uh, you produce it, you, 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 you got rid of all zero Lyapunov exponent, of all non-zero Lyapunov exponents, this is one way to end the, the construction. Or at some point, there are no uh, zero Lyapunov exponents to keep doing this. Uh, to the, to, to keep doing this. Uh, you, you fall into one or the other possibility. Okay, so, uh, so this is uh, how it's done in that case. And in this case here, it's also... An idea that uh, appears here. Which is, you don't have, like in that situation, you have unstable and stable bundles. And you can have, there is enough dimension to go from, like we have passing manifolds, so you get unstable manifolds here. And then you have uh, uh, stable manifolds, and they cross, and uh, if you start filling up space, uh, you are going to, to cover sets of positive measure. So if you have uh, 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 this partially hyperbolic situation, you have like an unstable bundle here, and you have stable bundles here, but they are not of complementary direction. There is some kind of uh, 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 extra bundles that, uh, uh, that are annoying, so you don't fill up. So, 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 so once you can kind of look at this picture, it, you don't fill up your, your space. But you can have, uh, uh, so the idea of, uh, Pushub is that uh, you can uh, look at things with many legs. So uh, those bundles here, so, the, uh, uh, so you have three bundles, but if you take uh, the plus and minus, they have no reason to be in jointly integrable. So uh, if you start kind of moving around, so you, keep, you do again this bundle here, so you kind of go along here up to this intersection, move to, to this, moves here and moves here, you might uh, and likely will not come back to the same uh, point. So you kind of flip and you can move in the center direction. So actually, uh, the general situation that was uh, established in the works of uh, Dougou Piat and, uh, and uh, Amy uh, Wilkinson is that uh, uh, you have generic, there's a condition called accessibility, which says that basically you can change the dynamics to, uh, if you have a global partial hyperbolic splitting, you can perturb the dynamics to get uh, that uh, by, by moving along, along just these two bundles that don't have trans uh, 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 complementary directions, is um, you can uh, access the whole manifold. So any two points in the manifold can be linked by a, a, a path with finitely many legs uh, going just um, over those two bundles. This is, reminds us of certain uh, version of, uh, uh, it's like control theory, so that but, uh, you need to uh, get uh, to, 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 to do something specific, and then you can just change uh, along some fixed directions, and you don't have enough directions to do it in a trivial way, but you can do some kind of more complicated thing. So, but uh, you don't perturb the bundles directly, you have to perturb the map that, uh, perturb, that, that generates some motion of the bundles, but this involves some infinite construction, so there are delicate issues. We are able to do this in a local version of this, so, that, uh, so there's Dougou Piat Wilkinson, says that... Uh, Generically, generic accessibility of global partial hyperbolic systems 
And now we can prove, so we prove a local version of this. So now the thing is that uh, uh, the, the, the partial hyperbolic splitting is not d defined over uh, an open set. Uh, it's not, well, it's not defined over the whole manifold, but actually it's not defined over open sets a priori. So it's even a little bit more uh, trick to even define what you have. What is it that, uh, where are you allowed to move and where you're not around to make turns and so on. But uh, 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 in, a, in the end is that uh, after understanding all the picture, it doesn't get that complicated. In the end. Anyway, so uh, to conclude, uh, what can, can be done after this? Like this is just uh, uh, initial uh, uh, information that you get from, uh, from the systems. You, can, uh, you, you, you answer to a certain extent the question of ergodicity on the case of positive entropy. A question that remains is, what about the case of zero entropy? Uh, is it uh, also going to be ergodic? Uh, uh, as in the case uh, that uh, uh, maybe by some variation of Fox to be a uh, Eulon construction, because in this case uh, you don't have the problem of the Lyapunov exponents. Uh, nobody managed to, to make this work in C1. Yeah, it's kind of complicated, it's not just them. And, uh, or uh, it you look like more like the situation in uh, KEM. Uh, there, there, there are results that uh, even, uh, like even in two dimensions the question is uh, it's open, certainly, uh, uh, this kind of, uh, in two dimensions, there is obstruction to transitivity coming from, from KAM. This is known that uh, there are no such obstructions in uh, C1 topology. So that is, uh, uh, I think, Bonati uh, Crevisier. So uh, it's not uh, actually... Um, uh, so, so, so I have no idea, so uh, that's uh, actually, I wouldn't know uh, in which direction I would uh, conjecture this, but certainly uh, perhaps the most important uh, question uh, uh, about this, uh, in, in this ergodicity thing. So, but uh, you can ask also, what about uh, refinements? What, what more do you get after, uh, 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 after ergodicity? So this is, uh, 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 I understand that you can try to uh, 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 get better information. So that, 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 that there are more information that can be gathered with, uh, uh, with more details about Lebesgue measure. And this uh, we are studying by controlling not only uh, the Lebesgue measure, but a whole set of other measures that you may uh, uh, get. So uh, one particularly important case is the set of measures that are uh, 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 like in the partially hyperbolic setting, let's say, if you concent concentrate on the symplectic setting, is the set of measures that are um, invariant under the, uh, 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 that, that absolute continuous or satisfy some version of absolute continuity in the C1 case over the unstable bundle. So it's natural that, uh, uh, that uh, SRB measures or, or, or kind of the compositions of Lebesgue measures and so on, and once you have enough regularity, so there's a problem that you have to be, go between C1 and C2, uh, they, they need to have the compositions that are absolute continuous with respect to the unstable manifolds. And, uh, this, but you can have more measures that, uh, uh, with respect to just some part, uh, some, some part partial bundle like this, you could have a bunch of measures that are not Lebesgue or components of Lebesgue that could be this kind of u gibbs states so-called u gibbs states. And, uh, but the thing is that if you can control all those measures, or maybe show that uh, there, there is only one, uh, uh, you get a lot more information that, that, that there is. For many years ago, there was a work of uh, Dogo Piat on, on limit law. So one question would be, for partial hyperbolic system, can you, can you kind of use techniques to control uh, what's the set of, uh, of U-Gibbs states, let's say, for partial hyperbolic systems, because there's the advantage that you do get a partial hyperbolic splitting. Another question is that uh, usually, uh, instead of not only interested on the C1 generic case, you may interest on the C2 maps that uh, are around there, or you can look at the stable uh, uh, conditions for, uh, for this. So you could look, uh, so you have a, uh, a generic map will be uh, satisfies blah, blah, blah. It will be just um, also a map that's just C1, but not C2. But let's say that uh, we are able now to discuss not just generic map, but an open set of maps. Maybe under the additional conditions, so you can control all maps in this open set that are uh, also, let's say, C2. Let's add uh, this. Then you are going to get information about C2 maps. 
This is very useful if you want to construct examples. There are a bunch of examples that have been constructed in the theory that comes from a mixture of C1 and uh, C infinity techniques. So you, you, you use C1 to do perturbation, you use C infinity to get uh, actually uh, good analytic properties, like uh, actually implement a space interior. Actually, a lot of these arguments here, they, they do the C1, 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 C infinity uh, transitions. Um, this uh, work, uh, 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 the, 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 so, so this look for uh, stable properties, uh, we have started. Uh, in the case of this, uh, of this theorem, we, are, uh, are under, uh, we have added the assumption, let's say that uh, you actually uh, work on the setting of partial hyperbolic uh, maps, and uh, you, you can prove that uh, you can get some kind of stable versions of ergodicity. And then in this case, you can control actually um, uh, 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 you, you can get extra information because you are on open sets and you can actually show you uh, something that uh, is guaranteed to be uh, ergodic instead of having just some, uh, some kind of uh, unspecified generic uh, system. Uh, uh, this is not the end, so certainly uh, uh, it should be good to know uh, it, whether you can get some, the same stability under a uh, 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 weaker condition like, uh, like not without having the, 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 the partial hyperbolicity here. The thing is even more challenging uh, uh, in the case of symplectic systems. So here, we don't, uh, we don't, in the symplectic case, we don't know how to prove in large generality uh, the existence of stable, uh, stable ergodicity, for instance. And uh, we, are, we have looked on it, and uh, we need to add, uh, for the moment, lots of conditions to, to get anywhere. Uh, or, or on the dimension or, or some other thing. So, so there is a lot of work to be done. And then once you have this, and then you can control some C2 maps, then you can uh, go on to, to other questions like uh, uh, generic, uh, so some conditions like Bernoulli property or, or things like this that uh, go a little bit beyond uh, just establishing ergodicity in these systems. Okay, I think that I'm uh, satisfied. <laughs> Are there any questions? What can be said about flows? Well, uh, our flows, uh, uh, we didn't kind of uh, uh, write uh, out. It like, doesn't uh, appear to be uh, uh, substantially different. I don't expect uh, 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 beyond what we know and what we don't know, so that it should basically behave uh, the same way. Uh, what about uh, k is equals to C2 differentiability? Well, this, uh, I know it's a difficult question, but what's your perspective? C2k is, uh, I expect, to be completely different. Uh, so uh, uh, I think that uh, there will be... Uh, uh, it, it, it's difficult to understand uh, 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 at all uh, 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 when a uh, non-uniformly hyperbolicity, like in two dimensions, whether at which stage it will be stable and, uh, and semi-stable, so that kind of gets to kind of a question about the standard map and so on. So there's no uh, understanding, even with any differentiability or analyticity and so on, that produces some kind of way to get. Uh, uh, stable non uniform hyperbolic. So it goes even beyond to expect. Uh, it could be that, uh, that it happens already in C2 that uh, you can get some uh, stable non uniform hyperbolicity, but uh, uh, it so, seems so far uh, beyond uh, our techniques that uh, it's completely uh, it, 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 it's too speculative to, to go into this direction. Any other questions? Well, in that case, I would like to uh, thank uh, Arthur. But, um, Thank the organizers. Well, I, yes, and that, that's what I want to do. I mean, this was an amazing conference. I think one of the most uh, impressive conferences I've ever been to. I mean, the size of it and also the, the level of organization. I mean, the, the sign boards, the sign notices, don't trip up here. You know, things like this, all these kind of details. And I've heard rumors that there were 15,000 emails sent uh, you know, by, by, you know, by Christoph. And it was kind of you know, beyond belief. So, uh, well, thank you so much, and I, I think I can, on behalf of all the organizers, all the participants, I can thank the organizers. Thank you.